Hello everyone from the Peterson Automotive Museum in Los Angeles, California. I'm Katie Osborne and inside this beautiful building we have hundreds of cars, such as my friend here, Lightning McQueen. Today we're going to learn about the history and science of cars. Now just like Lightning had to leave Radiator Springs to get to that museum, everyone sometimes has to move between locations. Now can you think of some ways to get from one place to another? Well, there's walking, riding a bicycle, and if you're going a long way, you can ride a train. Or to get across water, you might have to take a boat. And would you believe it? Hundreds of years ago, people rode in carriages that were pulled by horses. This is an example of a carriage from 1904. It was made by a company called Studebaker that would later go on to make cars. Now while you still may see a carriage being pulled by horses in certain parts of the country, most people will travel in something else, a car, which can be thought of as a carriage that moves itself. Check this out. This is what the first car looked like. Now it was invented in Germany over 135 years ago by Carl and Bertha Benz. But it doesn't really look like a car that you see today, does it? What are some of those differences you may see? Now you may have noticed the wheels. They are taller and thinner than what cars have today. In fact, they look more like what you would see on a carriage or a bicycle. Can you pinpoint something else that is different about the wheels? Hmm, well here's a clue. How many wheels do most cars have? This one only has three. Notice also that this car doesn't have a roof or sides. We call all the stuff that surrounds you when you're in the car, the body. Now if you look real close, you may notice another difference. How do you make a car go left or right? Well, in today's cars, you turn a steering wheel. The Benz here doesn't have a steering wheel. Instead, it has something called a tiller. Despite all of these differences, this is a wheeled vehicle that moves itself, so it is a car. Now, this car looks closer to what you see today. It's a Bugatti Veyron and was made around 15 years ago. But check this out. Look at how different it is from the Benz. It is much lower to the ground and has a much different shape. Plus, it has four wheels and the seats are enclosed by a body. One other difference between the cars is how fast they could go. This is called speed. The big question is, which of these cars do you think is faster? Let's have some fun and put them in a race. For reference, a person can walk four or five miles per hour. We'll let the Benz start first. It can go about 10 miles per hour. Quick math here, this is about twice as fast as walking. However, the Bugatti can go over 250 miles per hour. There are thousands of different types of cars that have been made over time, but the Bugatti and the Benz are just two. Come on, let's go ahead and take a look at a few others to see how cars have changed over time. This is a Ford Model T made in 1920, 35 years after the Benz. The Model T was important because it allowed more people to be able to own a car. Cars used to take a long time to make because, get this, they were made completely by hand. Only 25 Benzes like we've looked at were ever made. Now later on into history, a man named Henry Ford found a way to put cars together faster by using machines. Over 15 million Model Ts were made. Jumping ahead another 35 years, this is a 1955 Mercedes 300 SL. It was based on a race car and it was the fastest car you could buy at the time. Now this car is famous for how its doors open. Instead of the doors opening to the side like a traditional car, these go up. Can you think of something the doors look like? The car is called a bullwing because the doors make it look like a bird. Moving forward about the same amount of time, about 35 years, this is a 1991 Acura NSX. The cars we've looked at so far have been made in Europe or in America. This car was made in Japan. By the 1990s, Japan was making as many cars as American and European companies. So as you can see, cars have definitely changed a lot over time. Even cars by the same company have changed a lot. This is a 2014 Ferrari F12, and this is the very first Ferrari ever made. It is around 75 years old. Similarly, most people think of a Rolls Royce looking like this 1963 limousine, but this is how a Rolls Royce looked in 1913. Now think of all of the ways that cars can look different. First, they come in many different colors, including blue, like a 1981 BMW M1 green, like a 1956 Jaguar XKSS, purple, like a 1929 Ruxton, orange, like a 1968 Lamborghini Miura, and a lot of people's favorite, red. 
like a 1983 Porsche 959. They might even be coated with gold, like a DeLorean. Or you could find some cars in multiple colors, like a 1938 Delahaye 145. Or sometimes, cars are decorated with fancy designs like flames on the Golden Star, forests, like on Candy Root Beer, or flowers, like on Gypsy Rose. Cars can also have unusual shapes. This 1948 Davis Devon looks like a regular car from the back, but when you look at the front, you realize it only has three wheels. Do you remember another car that only has three wheels? Now who knows what the cars of the future will look like? I definitely don't have a clue, but this 2016 FF Zero is also different from other cars because of what makes it go. While most cars today run on gasoline or petrol, this car runs on electricity, which I do believe we will see more of in the future. A lot of people know about electric cars because of companies such as Tesla, who made this 2008 Roadster. But this car is over 100 years old and also runs on electricity. It looks just like those carriages we looked at earlier. Comparing it to the FF Zero and the Tesla, we see electric cars have changed over time as well. All in all, cars can look different, go different speeds, and run on different energy. But they all can get you from point A to point B. I'm Katie Osborne. Thank you so much for watching and learning all about cars.